Hey, James is testing us out, man. You hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Things are looking great, man. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Um, the only thing that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to facilitate um, is the uh, YouTube stream. I thought I had the the sign in for everything, but that's one thing that I do know. Um, and I remember now that there's a there's a dedicated laptop that's used for that specific purpose. Um, well, I would I would say, James, don't worry about that. And what we can do, I think after the fact, I think they can put this recording okay. on YouTube after it. Okay. All um, right. If not, we'll I'll just deal with that. I, I think. People can sign in still. They have the link. And yeah, so that's, that's okay with um, that for now. Because um, I'm not sure even Parab is YouTubed when they do it. Because they do all theirs online and so is OSAC. So I maybe they are, but I don't know if it's live either. So um, sure. we'll just see if we can put it on later. And in the meantime, a recording and um, this will work. Awesome. And, uh, and I did start up that recording, so... Everything should go pretty smooth. Okay. Well, I'll see you in uh, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Right. Thanks. Go, that's it. You have to come with me, Kenneth. Hello? <coughs> They're not there yet. Oh, no one's there. The audio's on now. Yeah, James, I think, is there. Yeah, no. we're, I'm here. I just. Muted myself to start, but uh, how you doing, Joy? Pretty well. Good. Good.
Oh, I think you made three seconds, but I would be you to get you back to the room. I'm missing Stella. <laughs> Stella. Where was she? I found her. <laughs> Let's go in the room. Do you want to bring your baby in? Let's go. Oh. No, this looks like that. Well, you have to go in that door. Okay. Okay.
Hello, hello, test, test. Anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear. I can hear you. Good. I can hear you. Joy, how's it going? Yes. I'm here. Hi, nice Juan. to see you. Nice to see you. Hello, Juan. Corey, how you doing? Pretty good. Sorry we're not in person, but um, thanks for, for being able to join us. Absolutely. I see Rolf. Hello. Hi, I'm here. Great. There's Roy. Hi, Roy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, James. We'll give everyone a few more minutes. Like Luke's joining. Rolf, thanks for joining us. I know you, uh, you've you got to cut off uh, at 620, I think you said. So we'll try to be yep. uh, keep things moving and uh, get you out of here on time. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We got Bill Kerner joining us, although he's more, even more blurry than Roy. <laughs> yeah, I, I just see a line on Bill, like a line of blur. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks. Uh, Bill, Bill, you look like I just woke up on a at the side of the road, and uh, I'm just waking up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm feeling like, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we can hear you okay, but your camera's not working. Uh, nice to hear your voice, though. How, how's your hip? Uh, still attached. Okay. Good, Bill. <laughs> so we got Bill. Luke, are you there? Can you Can you say hello? Yep. I am getting a little more situated, then I'll jump on camera and more audio. Great. No sweat. Um, Carl's not coming. Joy's here. I'm here. Don't see Susan yet. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We do have a quorum. I'm going to give it one more minute, and um, then I'll call a meeting to order. Um, and especially after... Uh, Last month when I was having troubles, I will uh, give some grace for folks who are <laughs> not completely on time. I was a little late last month, so got some grace for that. And let's see here. Oh, I see Susan is here and is in the attendees. So let's see if I have a way to Promote her. I don't think I do. Uh, James, are you I, running this? I, I got it. Okay. Okay. It looks like we got her in cameras. Perfect. Hi, Susan. Can you just say hello and make sure we're we got your audio? Susan, can you hear me okay? Hi, Susan. Hello? C could you try your microphone and make sure everything's working? Natalie's there. And I see we've got a couple of people in the audience. Um, okay, I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is the, welcome Natalie. Um, this is the April 24th uh, Mobility and Parking Board. It is 5.03 and I call the meeting to order. We'll do a quick little roll call. Uh, Bill Kerner. Here. Luke Prince. I am here. Rolf Jacobson. Here. Carl Stang's not here. 
Joy Porter. Here. Corey is here. Uh, Susan Presti. Susan, can you unmute and say hello, please? Corey, it looks like she can't hear anybody. I wonder if we can uh, send a, um, a message through the system to her. Yeah, I'm not seeing how to send a chat. Yeah. Susan, yeah. Susan hello. Hello, Susan. Not working. Hmm. Try to shoot her an email real quick. Thank you, James. Um, I th think we can go ahead and get started in the meantime. I'm a little concerned Susan can't hear us. Uh, Natalie, do you mind trying your microphone and let us know if uh, everything's working? Hello. Great. Mm -hmm. Got Natalie Johnson, our council liaison. Thanks for being here. And we got Roy, Juan, and James. Great. <clears throat> um. Well, we should, I guess, note for the record that so far, uh, we think Susan can't hear us and we can't hear her. Um, so the next item here is the approval of the agenda. Um, I've got the agenda up here and it's uh, it's in the Zoom. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda. Thank you, Rolf. Is there a second? Luke, seconds. And if there's no other discussion, then um, all in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Luke. I'm going to call that a pass, and I still don't have a vote from Susan. I emailed oh. her to let her know <laughs> if she's checking her email. Yeah, I, I don't have I don't have Susan's phone number to text her or call her. Is there James, is there a way you can uh, send a message in the system? I don't see a uh, chat, see chat in here. I looked I it doesn't look like there is a a way to do it um with this meeting set up. Okay. Um but I did send her an email as well, so hopefully, we maybe that. Um, I might be maybe able to call her. or bump her out, and then she'll have to come back in. Hmm. That might be okay. I can't hear anybody else either. Oh, I hear. Oh, oh your microphone Susan. works. Hello, 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 Susan. I can't hear anything. Can you pump up the volume? Her. We we can hear you, but you can't hear us. Okay. Okay, now can you hear me? We hear you. Okay, can thank you. Hear you. Us. Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Hi, Susan. Settings right, finally. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Welcome, Susan. You're just in time to vote on the approval of the agenda. Okay. We, oh. we've all voted. Oh, I, I approve. Thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item three is approval of the minutes. Um, so we've got uh, February and March minutes to approve. I hope everyone's had a chance to look at them. Uh, I made a couple of small modifications that we can talk about in a second. Did anyone else have any other changes to make to the minutes for February or March? Okay, other than, um, so compared to the, the minutes that have been sent out, I, I think I had, gosh, James, do you have them in front of you? There were two small changes. One, I asked that in February, we could put a heading to make it clear who Sebastian is and make it clear that we were talking about uh, the VIA system. So it's just a little small clarification. The other thing was in the March minutes, um, the, the, 
app, the app that we use in town here, C Click Fix, wasn't spelled properly, so it was a small typo to to uh, fix C Click Fix. And the only other change I asked was that the attendees be broken out into board members and other attendees. Um, James, oh, were those were those uh, amendments okay for you? Or did you see them? I think I pressed send on that email. Yes, I did see those those changes. Um, those are easy to make. I can get those knocked out quickly. So could I get a motion to approve both the Fe February and March minutes together with the uh, minor uh, revisions that I just mentioned? I would move approval of the February 2024 and the March 2024 uh, board minutes as uh, corrected. Um, Thank you, I'll Susan. Second Enjoy seconds. Any other discussion? Great. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Uh, next up, we've got public comment on non-agenda items. Um, normally, these are limited to three minutes, and we'd be glad to have public comment. I see we've got two people in the audience, and Joan Stang has her hand up. Um, James, are you able to promote Joan and let her speak? And Manitou, Dave, I, we see you're there, and we'll uh, we'll get to you after Joan. So I did allow her to, to to talk, so she should be able to speak to us now. Go ahead, please, Joan. Hey there, Joan Stang here. Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you. Okay, awesome. I assume you can see me. So I was hoping to make uh, a statement during the public comment portion, and I assume this is the time. Yep, you're up. Okay, thanks. All right, so Joan Stang, for the record. I live at 204 Crystal Park Road. Thanks for this opportunity. I'm actually here today to make a comment about the slowdown. This is a neighborhood, not a racetrack, yard signs that are being displayed along Crystal Park Road where I live. These signs are literally a plea for help to stop the speeding and aggressive driving that has been happening along this roadway long before my husband and I moved into the neighborhood. The few safety measures that have been deployed along this road to include 20 mile per hour speed limit signs, road diet lane narrowing, and a few other areas of paint are not working. Please know that requests to sign complaints for aggressive driving are also being ignored by police. I personally have been told by police that I am the only one reporting aggressive driver complaints when using this road. Residents also rarely see an officer enforcing the speed limit along this extremely busy and noisy roadway that is shared by families walking their children, elderly with dogs, people bicycling, running, and otherwise enjoying our beautiful quality of life. The City of Manitou studied traffic on Crystal Park Road on August 22nd through September 13th, 2023. 6,560 vehicles were measured in a 20 mile per hour zone. 45% of the vehicles were speeding and considered enforceable violations of the speed limit. It should also be noted that some vehicles were flying along at 43 miles per hour. Residents concerned about these issues are wondering when the city and the police will take road safety and pedestrian dignity seriously. I would like to request that the city Put a plan of actionable items in place with implementation dates assigned for each action as of this year. Those of us who walk, hike, bicycle along this road are tired of being treated like second class citizens when we receive near misses and are shouted at during excursions along this road. In addition, we ask that this plan address speeding and noisy vehicular traffic. As you may be aware, Crystal Park and the McLaughlin cabin areas are still being developed. There are many homes still being built and renovated. This means more residential vehicles to come to include heavy construction equipment that drive this road already. Please know that this is not the only neighborhood pleading for more courteous driving behaviors throughout Manitou. 
I have heard of neighbors along Becker's Lane, Ruxton, and Washington Avenues all crying out for help. I am sad to say that I am losing hope that the city of Manitou cares about safe mobility experiences for everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments, Joan. Um, it's uh, <clears throat> normally with public comment, we're uh, not, um, there isn't a requirement of a response, but if anybody would like to respond, you're welcome to at this time. Otherwise, I'll say thank you, Joan, for for uh, for joining us and for speaking up and um, and for sharing your comments. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to just respond and say thank you also. Um, while I don't live in that neighborhood or the other neighborhood mentioned, I think it's super important that members of the community come forward and talk to us and tell us things like this um, with the understanding that maybe uh, we can do something about it or help in some way, shape, or form. So I love the fact that uh, people are utilizing. This is a resource. We are a resource. Each and every one of us are a resource for our citizens and our neighbors because we sit on this board. And so thanks for coming to here to to see if we can do something about it because I guess we, we have an in, right? I mean, this is the in. This is, we have Roy and, and the city clerk and and everybody's here. And so when we hear our neighbors doing what is a, a, a cry for help, let's see if we can get behind something, an action plan of some sort, because I think it's important. Thank you. Hey, Luke. Um, I see we've got another member of the public is uh, Karenna has got their hand up. James, can you bring Karenna in? Thank you. Hello. Hi there, we can hear you, go ahead. Hi, yeah, I live on 131 Washington Avenue. And I have two kids and I have to walk my older one to school every day. And our road is very unsafe. Um, the west, the west half of Washington Avenue, doesn't have any sidewalks, and we are trying um, to uh, make this possible, and everyone to know that we need um, some safe roads to walk kids to school. Either sidewalk or. Um some kind of marks on the road. Um, something that it doesn't feel so unsafe when the cars are passing by. Cars drive very, very fast. And uh, very often I smell marijuana from passing cars. And we need a curb urgently because people are driving under the influence and I'm very worried that one day, and it takes only one car to kill a kid or a person. So we urgently need something like a curb or sidewalk. Or marks, something. Okay, thank, thanks um, for your comment. And just, just for our record, could you please give your full name uh, for the record for this meeting? My name is Karina Aguayer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and we also have um, another neighbor who lives uh, uh, nearby and she wants to speak up here. And we're using uh, my my phone here together. Can she uh, give, give some speech? Sure, that's fine. Just uh, have her give her full name, please. And uh, okay. yes, yeah, she can have three minutes to speak. Uh, hi, my name is Susan Griswold and I live at 109 uh, Washington Avenue. I've lived there for 12 years and it didn't used to be such a busy street until they did the flood mitigation and directed everyone who used to go down um, past the park to Manitou Avenue and now everyone turns and comes up bypass. But uh, we do have an awfully, 
awful lot of very fast drivers. And an example is last fall uh, on a Sunday afternoon, I heard a loud noise and uh, two young men driving down the street in their car were going so really fast and they hit the dip, which is just west of my house. And it they hit they landed so hard they actually went up in the air that it uh, tore the hoses loose from their their car so that they were stranded there for a while until a tow truck came. Uh, also, people come down that street going so fast they hit the speed bump or the the dip, not realizing it's there, and you hear so many cars or see them actually bounce in the air and then uh, hit the ground. And we do uh, get a lot of tourist uh, traffic up that way because the uh, uh, internet directions aren't always uh, clear on how to get to Manitou Avenue in downtown Manitou. Uh, but those are just the things that I wanted to say uh, uh, that just to kind of be a second, that there are a lot, there's a lot of traffic. You can smell a lot of pot at all, all hours of the day and night. And uh, you can hear the cars hitting the, the road or just see them whizzing by. So those are my comments and thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your comments, both of you. Um, I guess I, I've got a question, a question maybe for staff on both of these. So we're, we're uh, hearing requests from the public for um, what sounds like traffic calming, D should we direct these uh, these uh, questions to our, we, we've got a traffic calming project or um, you know, we, we can note these concerns and keep them in mind for future discussions. We, we don't have anything on our agenda that's directly related to that today. Um, Roy or Juan, would you have any uh, a staff response to, to those comments? So um, are you talking about both comments or just the recent? Um, but as you like. So I guess there are two comments about uh, um, speeds and unsafe conditions from vehicles, one on Crystal Park Road, one on Washington Avenue. Crystal Park Road um, was a traffic calming uh, request, I think, over a year ago. Um, and uh, and then it was brought to a community meeting. So action was taken to uh, street diet. We put we dropped the speed limit 20 miles per hour. Um, and we fixed some of the, we painted the curbs, uh, for the reduced parking on the, on the curbs in certain areas. Um, so we, we've done like kind of a phase one approach. Um, we are doing some more data testing, um, to see if, cause it takes a while for these type of things to show improvement or not. Uh, currently the data is, is showing positive for improvement. Maybe not to the level everyone wants, but there is signs of improvement, which I'm going to uh, have shortly. Um, but we are also looking at other things we can do. Um, for example, on the stretch around the uh, the corner of CPR um, to the uh, crosswalk for the school and then to Manitou Avenue, uh, we are considering maybe an elevated crosswalk there as a traffic calming device or a speed table. Um, somewhere in between there. So we're kind of looking at uh, that because we've had a couple people that live on that street saying that the crosswalk where it's located is kind of risky and close calls because of some of the speeds. Um, so we also just for the record had a appeals to increase the speed on CPR. So we are always given uh, asked to do everyone has their own uh, wishes. <laughs> And so we actually, they wanted the speed to go back up to 25 and even on upper CPR wanted it to go to 30. Um, at that time, at this time, after uh, a, about six month discussion with the petitioner um, and some of the community there in upper CPR, I denied that request because I, I feel like there's not enough time to even test what we've been doing at 20 miles per hour. So um, so at this time we're, we're not, doing anything else yet, but we are looking at other options as we're getting reports of some issues. And then we also have to get data and we'll always get data to prove one way or the other which way we're going and is it improving so we can take steps at a time. Um, so that that's kind of CPR uh, information at this point. When it comes to Washington, I did go up and visit with uh, the folks that are on the phone call today. 
Um, we uh, looked at the street um, where the, the biggest issue is that house on the corner coming off uh, from Sunshine Trail and you make that sharp turn into the blind corner and their house is right there and their, their walkway coming down the stairs goes right into the street. So it is, even if, even if cars are going slow, it's, it's kind of a, a scary situation if they're walking out there and the car comes around the corner. So, um, so we are looking at this point, we had the street, uh, the calming committee, the traffic calming committee, uh, I put them together last Friday, we met, um, and that does include a member of the MAPS board, Carl Stang. Uh, and we came up with, I produced some ideas that we can do there from delineators to trying to make a, produce a walk path for them from their walkway to a crosswalk a little further down to get to the other side of the road, which has a natural path already where people are walking. So we can get them into that area and, and use delineation to help with traffic calming basically using that area as what's, what's called a slow flow. Um, so not putting any middle stripe except in the corner itself, tightening it up and people just have to be you know, careful. The, the speed limit is 10 miles per hour. Curb uh, uh, arrows will be produced there as well to slow people around to the corner. Um, and then some signage that pedestrians, pedestrians up ahead and a, and a pedestrian crossing. Um, so again, all that takes time, takes some money. So we are, are, I'm getting that report ready for those folks and we'll be sending that out hopefully this week to let them know what our current plans are for kind of phase one to kind of help with that situation. Well, that's really great. Uh, thank you very much for that, that update, Roy. And, it, um, it sounds like, you know, the, these comments are not like specifically mobility and parking board issues. Um, and it's great to know that there is a, a, a function with this traffic calming uh, committee that is able to address it. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that both of them are on, on the radar of that group. So um, thank you again to the public for your comments. And uh, thank you very much, Roy, for uh, the update on that. You bet, thank you. Okay, any other public comments? I'm um, looking at the participants. Please raise your hand in the Zoom if you would like to make a comment. Otherwise, we will keep moving along here. Um, okay, next item on our agenda is our City Council Liaison Report. And we've got Natalie here with us. So Natalie, please go ahead with Council Report. Sure, hello everyone. Um, so yeah, I guess the biggest, um, I guess council agenda item we've discussed since the last meeting was um, Mount, with Mountain Metro. And um, again, it was a discussion that is ongoing. We won't actually be voting on and discussing um, routes for next year until the end of the year. So, um, so it was literally a work session just to discuss different ideas. And um, I can say that council was in favor of trying to figure out a way to get those mountain metro buses um, potentially back along um, El Paso to hit some of the RV parks, Buffalo Lodge, and then of course, um, potentially getting that Route 36 to Safeway. And so kind of looking at um, kind of expanding those offerings to help support um, residents and others um, get around. Um, but we recognize in that conversation that there's a lot of infrastructure that's missing, curbs, sidewalks, things that are um, necessary in order for Mountain Metro to operate. And so we tasked the group, um, the city staff and Metro staff with kind of trying to figure out what's missing and what's needed to kind of start making those connections. Um, <clears throat> and I think somewhat similar to Roy's comment, you know, there's a lot of different things we're looking at right now. You know, we looked at the vias, you know, we have the trams in place. We purchased the Dillon Motel. Um, the Metro Board recently purchased property on the west end of town. And so it feels like there's a lot of sort of opportunities that are hitting all at once. And just that idea of kind of, you know, taking a step back and seeing where the holes actually are and what needs to be done, um, knowing that there's a lot happening right now already. And so um, I think it's really big picture. It's like an exciting time to be on your board, I would say. <laughs> um, and then just another sort of thing to mention, um, I know some things have come come up in terms of project, o project OSAC is working on and potentially Parab and, and work up at Higginbotham Flats. And just um, 
I don't know with this board and again with staff, the best way for advisory boards to work with one another. Um, but if there's any way I can support that conversation, I am up for that as well. Great, thanks, Natalie. Uh, mm -hmm. A couple of questions come to mind, but I'll open it up to the board first. Are there any questions or comments on, on Natalie's presentation? So I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I know when we talked about Mountain Metro last year, the timing was all wrong and we were essentially too late to have um, meaningful input on some changes. You mentioned the end of this year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our, our board exists to provide uh, guidance to council whenever we can. Would it make sense for us to think about a combined work session with council or some kind of structure where our board could have uh, a chance to provide some some input on the Mountain Metro at at the right time with maybe a little bit of breathing room? We don't want it to come right down to the wire. Um, wh what should be the timing and what, what would you envision how we could collaborate and support the council on that? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. Um, and I agree the timing with Metro is tricky. Um, I kind of want to actually defer to Roy and Juan. What do you think? Like, is this something that would be a good council agenda item? Or is this something that, um, I mean, sometimes those conversations are a little stilted. Is it, what do you think? Is it something that we could just make an agenda item here and discuss here? Or is it something that would need to happen collaboratively? Um, well, it's a good question. I know, uh, we just went through a work session. Um, I, I never have a problem if the MAPS board um, wants to participate. Um, I know we did when we did the progressive parking. We had a, a, a big board meeting with council, with MAPS. Um, I had a good discussion, which helped uh, propel that, that uh, progressive pricing and everything forward. Um, so some, you know, sometimes there is a, a need to maybe have a, a bigger discussion and the folks here in the MAPS board, uh, because of their their uh, concerns of mobility and parking, I mean, they're, they're the ones thinking about it from a citizen perspective and uh, probably can be valuable. I mean, you, you could also do a memo with your your uh, thoughts. Um, if, if anyone saw the council board meeting, uh, and Natalie, I think it was three weeks ago or four weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, council presented a, a fourth um, option, I believe, from the three options that were asked for us to bring back from the last meeting, and they offered a fourth option. Um, you know, maybe it's as easy as the, the board members looking at that, that conversation and then discussing what they think of that fourth option or the other options and then providing a, a recommendation to council uh, concerning if they like the fourth option. Now, there was conflict with the fourth option because of um, the road not being capable to handle ADA. Uh, and uh, Natalie, you remember or Juan, what road that was? I forget now. It just... I mean, it's, it's El Paso. Well, El Paso and Beckers, or not Beckers. Or, um... or Columbia. It Columbia, was Columbia, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that hooks up around, and, and that's a problem area where they wanted the bus, the shuttle to go to. So so there's some, there's some issues there, but... Uh, you know, there's many ways we can kind of look at this, but if you want, if you want to get input, I know that's this has been discussed. Uh, maybe, maybe just getting a memo out there could be good, um, unless we can get another meeting with council on this. And and Juan, I don't recall we were going to go back to council, or were we on the, another discussion with Mountain Metro? Do you remember Juan? Yeah, the, we we probably won't have it until September, and that's going to yeah. be discussing the. New route that uh, they're currently working on right now. At this. Okay, so we broke up for a minute there, Juan. But uh, it sounds like September there will be another meeting, and that might be <laughs> that might be a time that um, that we could that the topic would be revisited. And I think you know there's interest from the map board to be involved in the discussion, and it's kind of a question for Natalie. Like, would is council? Uh, is council supportive of us having a combined discussion about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me, can I get back to you? Let's let's talk about it because I'd like to kind of process what it would look like, but maybe it is similar to what Roy suggested where maybe we have two or three items that you all are working on and it's kind of a um, uh, like a more strategic conversation than just the, the one 
um, option. I just kind of want to see what's the best use of your time um, with us. Um, Cause again, like we don't often like have a, you know, big sheets of paper and actually like talk through. It's kind of much more like one person said something, you wait, you raise your hand. And like, I don't know how effective it always is aside from, you know, so I'm just, so let me, let me, can I think about it and get back to you, Corey? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and then that piece of, again, if we do want to do that, um, we'd probably want to get on the agenda as soon as possible with council. So I guess we'd probably be looking at, at August, right? I mean, a work session in August. Yeah, that would make so, sense. So that may um, be, worth, even if we just have a placeholder, Roy, and just see if we can get a little placeholder yeah, there. Just yeah, let, then, let me talk to Denise so she can, yeah. when she meets with the mayor next, and uh, I will tell her the MAPS board has interest in a, uh, work session to discuss, uh, you know, the Mountain Metro route and maybe a couple of additional items. I don't know, Corey, if there's other things that the count that the board here wants to discuss, but um, is, is, is that available in August for that kind of discussion before final decisions in September? Is, is anyone on this board opposed to that idea? Okay. No. Well, then I think that's great, Roy. So, so our target is that we'd have some kind of a, a combined session with council. We're shooting for August because that gives us plenty of time before the deadline for Mountain Metro. And we're going to be thinking in the meantime of any other topics that we think might be appropriate for a combined session between MAP, MAP board and council. Got that? And real quick, uh, Juan, when, when is the presentation of our walkable city happen when we get all this information as we're talking about every every month when is that being presented is that also in august or yeah. september yeah I, I believe it's in september september 14 i believe Ooh, interesting. Okay. okay okay so we'll just uh we'll make that a separate item because that's real time sensitive and i'll, I'll talk to denise and see what's the possibility in, in an august uh board meeting work session with council all right that's great. Um, <clears throat> any other comment before we move along from council liaison report? Okay, we'll keep going. The next item on our agenda, item number six is presentations. Um, and I'm sorry, help me out here, Juan. Do we have any presentations? There's nothing listed on the agenda. No, we just wanted to go as a, as a new item. We wanted to discuss uh, the trams. And, okay, uh, well, that comes up under under new business. So that's yeah, that's correct. The next item. Do, do you want to jump into that then? So that's item seven, new business. Sure, we're, I guess <laughs> tram updates. Sure, ahead, we're we're ready. So in January, we voted to um, before spring break to test out the trams. You know, to try look at the look at the ridership. Uh, we were looking at battery life so that we can make a decision before summer. Uh, what areas might be best served uh, with the routes, and um, I'm gonna allow James to uh, go over those uh, those ridership numbers for for the trams uh, what we collected during uh, spring break. James, I see you're muted. Are you uh, ready to talk about this? Yes. Yeah, so I got those numbers pulled up. Can everybody see? Uh, this the spreadsheet that I have shared currently. Yes. I'll see that okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so uh with the mileage uh or battery life rather um it's it's looking pretty solid um performance wise. Um granted we didn't have a lot of a lot of uh riders um for for pretty long stint of this testing um and the weekends were definitely the the best days that we saw um in terms of ridership weekdays was was pretty underwhelming but um for the most part we did pretty well uh on battery life so uh starting the day off at 100 percent um we were we were ending around 80 percent um on average uh, so battery life, they, they did hold up um, with the, the route that we have been driving, which is going from um, basically the high WAP lot to the Wichita lot to the Smishner lot. Um, and uh, 
the, the numbers that you see here on the right hand side, um, this is the number of people that we're, uh, we're picking up at pretty much each lot. Um, the, the, the two busiest and by far the busiest was the Hiawatha lot. Um, but I think, uh, a lot of that was due to, uh, uh, folks more or less wanting something that was going up to, to Ruxton or closer to Ruxton. Um, and a lot of those folks were, were getting off at, uh, Smishney and and heading up from there, um, but um, but overall, um, I think if we can if we can use the I think the best use case is going to be for weekends and and special events just off of what I've been seeing. Um, but uh, any any questions regarding our numbers? Anything that stands out or is striking anybody? One quick question, uh, James. So we've got we've got two trams, right? Is this are you using all one? Or are you alternating, or how how is that working? So they were alternating trams, um, and we got similar performance from both. Um, we had one day, um, and these are going to be the 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 March twenty first and. I'm sorry, March 22nd and March 23rd. So you can see those are listed twice. So that's going to be for when we had to switch out uh, shuttles. Um, and these were due to uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, one was a, a strange issue where we went from 80% battery to zero. Um, not sure what happened on that day. Um, so we, we parked it and we switched. Um, the other one, it just... We didn't get a full charge on it, um, and if I remember correctly, this was due to um, a fuse uh, uh, breaking in the building that we were charging at. Um, so we we ran it for a little bit of the day and then swapped. Um, but for the most part, these are alternating shuttles from day to day, um, and we were getting pretty consistent data. Okay, and over time, are you are you keeping track of of tram one and tram two? Uh, I'm I'm thinking in case there there does become a battery issue. So I see like the 22nd, 23rd, you had to swap out. On one day, you got down to zero. The next day, there wasn't a full charge. Is that the same tram? You know these kind of these kind of questions. Are are you tracking them individually? Uh, to be honest, we we haven't been. Um, we, I guess it just wasn't a uh a thought um okay. but yeah to answer your question we did not track specifically which tram was being used for what days hey hey james um i got a question and like can we look at um let's look at march 24th um you uh you had service time of 5.58 hours of service time drove 14 miles right um, you started with a charge of 90 and you ended with a 70. So is, so is, what, is that telling us that there's still, I mean, you can do that twice and you'll be down to 50 or do, do we know? Um, so I don't know if we can necessarily go by that logic. Um, uh, just with my experience with batteries, um, Typically, if you get it down to a certain point, you usually get a little bit more runtime um, at, at certain points of the battery than others. Um, but that's something that we did not test for. We we more or less just were testing, planning to have them charged beginning of the day and then just run them until either they needed to be swapped out or uh, until the, the end of the service hours. Okay, Juan, Juan, I think it would be important that we check with the manufacturer on what is the lowest end battery percent we can hit before we have to be concerned to get it back to charging. Um, so we should check on that and, and see if we can't squeeze a little more time out of these if we needed to. 
Yeah, we'll do. Um, I know the weather, the cold weather was also a big, a big factor in um, how fast it were draining. Because when, you know, when we had warmer temperatures, they were lasting us just a bit longer. Mm -hmm. But I'll check with the manufacturer on that. Yeah, and and what they did say early on is that when the temperatures get really warm this summer, it definitely will help extend the battery life as well. So right, but yeah, right. we can check in some some of that. I think that'd be useful information as well on on how much. What's the minimum they would recommend we draw that battery down? All right, thank you. Sure. Any other board questions or comments about about the data that James is sharing here? I would like to uh, just make the comment, um, you know, having a fairly extensive background in vehicle testing, um, I would be interested to uh, offline talk some more with staff about strategies for what kinds of things we might measure. Um, just off the top of my head, I think we should be tracking the trams separately so we can identify one battery from the other. We ought to be tracking battery temperature and taking measurements throughout the day. Uh, Roy had a great question about, you know, is does the battery drain linearly with the distance traveled? That's something that's fairly, could be fairly easy to track as we're trying to gather data. Um, I know that these trams do not have regenerative braking, and that costs a lot more. So in the future, if we were considering purchase of more trams, um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a fair bit more data that we probably ought to collect in order to be able to make a, a really good decision about that. Um, yes. There's a number of ways we could do it. We could probably hire a fancy consultant. Uh, if it worked for staff, I would be glad to schedule some uh it, you know, in another meeting where we could talk about some of the technical details here and um, and maybe come up with a more comprehensive test plan. So I'll, I'll throw that out as an, as an offer for you guys to consider. Um, just speaking as a, a map board member, I'm glad to see that we're we're getting some use out of them and that they're, you know, we, we're, we're learning some things and, and starting to bring them in, into use here. Yeah, okay. Corey, and I guess, I guess the next question is uh, collectively, just to talk about the routes. I know the last the last time you guys had some suggestions on the routes, but as we move closer to the summertime, I, I really want to discuss um, co and work collectively on what would be the best routes that could be best served, that could be, you know, pretty much complement, like even mount the, the routes that are with Mountain Metro. Well, I think that I think it's a good idea. So what, what would be the timing for that? And then just as a reminder, we did have a public meeting where we probably set some expectations about uh, route selection. And would we want to engage the public when we when we try to make that decision? What would be the right timing? I think as a board, we would like to support that. Right. So uh, the, uh, we go to council uh, May 14 to present this this data that we're presenting to you. And at the same time, we would like to also bring forward uh, possible routes that we're looking at to uh, put put in before the summertime, which is, I would say, June first. Okay, um, and I'm sorry if I missed it, but it, is there a, a staff recommendation or a couple of choices, or is there what what kind of uh, recommendation would you be looking for today, Juan? Well, what was uh, right now? I know Hiawatha was a. The, the highest use lot, but we were using uh, Wichita, Hiawatha, and the Spinsky lot. So, right. So those are those are the three lots, and you're basically going back and forth along Manitou Ave, right? Right. And then uh, the, the other thing to consider, too, is that Thursday through Friday wasn't as busy. I mean, the, the, the busiest days were, were the weekend. So we're, we were thinking about using it for the same lots and Especially, you know, with special events coming up, we can also utilize the trams uh, for that use as well. But just wanted to get, you know, get get, get your your thoughts are, of. Are they stopping on the street anywhere if somebody's flagging them down? No, we're we're, we're pulling into the no. lot, you know, for for Only. safety reasons. And at the same time, we after our meeting with the uh, Mountain Metro. They didn't want the tramps to be in route on the same route that the buses were on just because they didn't want to cause any type of confusion. So we, we thought it was best even for safety reasons to uh, utilize uh, the lot inside. And that was also part of our um, 
our tram survey engagement that we went by to use the utilize these uh, lots as well. You know, my guess is that you'll see a, a lot higher weekday usage throughout the summer as it starts to get busy as it already has here in town. Mm -hmm. um, so are you are you looking for a recommendation? Like you noted that they were uh, less used on Thursdays and Fridays. M my thought is if they're available, we ought to try to use, use them as much as we can as we get into this busy season and, um, and keep track of the usage. Uh, that's my thought off the top of my head. And I'm still not clear about what kind of recommendations are available for routes. I mean, so right yeah, now, yeah, you wanted, yeah, if you wanted to add in, in addition to the to the three lots we're currently using, if there was possibly a, a, a uh, to add an additional location, or uh, yeah, how, how soon how soon can we how, can people start parking at the Dillon, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the next question. Yeah, and that probably won't be like it. It will be more closer to the end of the year with uh, the Dillon Motel. So one more quick question. Is there a sign at the parking lots or a pickup at all? Is there any kind of sign? We, we don't have any signs right now. That's what we're currently working at. Right now we were, we were mostly focused on like the ridership and the battery life so that we can make a better determination, you know, before the summertime. Uh, but now that we've tested, we have a good idea of what the, the battery life is and where we will start looking at signs to make it more visible for you know our, our customers that we have uh daily for that because otherwise Juan, just right now you just would have you'd have to happen to be lucky right to, to know that there was a, a tram available well we, we have posted it on the website so people are aware of uh the locations you know we have posted it on the website but as far as visible signage on the street yeah we we, we don't have any just because we did you know, we we're we're trying to reduce uh we're trying to assign those signage to the the proper locations, and now that we have the data, we can uh, assess the, those things and uh, make better recommendations on that where we want signage. So Juan, the way I understand this, then basically, if somebody's using the tram, they're being picked up from the lot they park in, either Hiawatha or. Uh, Schmichny, and basically their drop off is Wichita. That's that's what their options are. If they want to ride back out to the use the tram back out to their parking lot, they go to Wichita. So it's right. not really so they, anywhere else in town for for now. Correct. Okay. I if we're going to stay with the lots, I don't see what else we would add to this at this time. I mean. Um, without expanding the the route we, significantly. we were we were exploring uh taking it down to Safeway we're just not sure how that that would work with our battery life but I guess that, that's something we can uh we can look at with, with with the discussion we had about Mountain Metro and and Buffalo Lodge came up I mean is it a possibility to to add a loop that goes to Buffalo Lodge and back or does that make sense the buff I'm sorry, Corey said repeat that again. I, I'm wondering if it might make sense to add a loop that goes to Buffalo Lodge. That's of interest from the Mountain Metro side, but there's reasons why we can't do that with Mountain Metro, um, especially in the short term. Um, would it make sense through the summer season for us to explore adding Buffalo Lodge as a stop? Sure. We can do that. Just an idea. Uh -huh. uh, interested so do, in other board, board members can explore, can just a just a, a little thing i like to throw in too is that council someone council had concerns on um you know they go to safeway they pick up groceries they bring it back get dropped off maybe at hiawatha now they have to still get home i mean so so there are some concerns on that that was brought up in the meeting as well um some want the safeway option i think it's a it's a value to have safeway uh we don't have any major any kind of stores uh food outlets in manitou um, so that would be helpful um but then how do they get from the drop-offs to their home would, was one of the big questions which which we can't do everything for everyone we we realize but uh that is one of the things that that was a little bit of pushback too on that route um and then the other thing is just the fact how do they turn around and, and things like that was going to be a struggle when they go out there
yeah, I think there's, I, I've heard strong desire for some kind of um, transportation to Safeway, but I'm not sure that it's easy to add right now. Um, if we wanted to expand and, and investigate the interest, um, you know, f the Fields Park area, uh, Becker's Lane might might be a spot and, and the place where there's some room. And then Buffalo Lodge is another place that pops into my mind, but um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not pushing that necessarily. I'm really interested to hear what others on the, on the committee might suggest. It's, it's kind of open-ended. You could go anywhere, right? <laughs> right. Uh, Luke here. I, I think that uh, the last point Corey just said is the best point of anything is that you can really go anywhere with these things. The data that you've collected so far is awesome. And uh, those are just utilizing the lots. If we want to continue utilizing the lots, then cool. Uh, that's great. If we want to open up some other things towards Buffalo Lodge and the skate park, also great. Uh, and it's about to be summertime and we'll get people riding wherever we go. So it's just fun to have these toys uh, at our disposal. I think it's important to you know track the differences between uh, one and two. Uh, but that's your team to, to, to do all that. And I think you're doing a pretty good job as far as routes, uh, my suggestion is to um, really just, uh, man, one end of town to other. I like the gateway to gateway. If we can go all the way up towards Serpentine and, and do a flip there just to, you know, say we do it. You know, we can hit, hit that end of town. And if we can go all the way to the other end of town, uh, I think that's great. To see the battery life on these things um, at the end of the day still being pretty high, all things considered. Um, I'd be interested to see what it looks like to start super early in the morning and kind of go into the evening, see how long of a consecutive day you can do it. Um, but awesome. I think they're super awesome and nice to have. Thanks, Juan. Can I make one correction real quick? That the, there is There are limits to the trams uh, where they can go. Um, we do not uh, feel comfortable them being any of the uh, up uh, the hills area, any of like you know, Pilot Knob, for example, those areas where the there's steep inclines, and and uh, so we are definitely not advocating for any of those travel for the trams themselves. They'll be limited to flat surfaces, um, and so that's one of our challenges with the tram. I just want to make sure the board all knows that that there are some limits for sure on where it can go in town. But I love the idea of Luke, uh, what you mentioned. I I like the idea from arch to arch. Um, the only other challenge we have too is the comments about um, where are we just catering for visitors and how do we how do we help the residents and this tends to cater the, in, in the in the discussion it, it caters more to the visitors and less to the residents so that's something else we've got to think about too as we move forward. Roy, I don't know why you got to pick on Pilot Knob. <laughs> um, well, because Corey, Corey, you live there, that's why. Yeah. I have to pick on Pilot <laughs> Um, and my, my understanding is we, we are staying away from any of the hilly areas because of the battery life concern, right? Okay. Um, well, well, battery and the handling, you know, they're a cart. So the, okay. it's, it's a little different handling than a vehicle, power-wise and even uh, move-in-wise. It's just easier on a flat surface, safer. Okay, so w when we consider future uh, um, tram acquisitions, we might we might want to think about ones that can access our hilly areas, but for these ones, we'll stay with flat. Um, uh, Juan, are, are you looking for um, like a motion and a suggestion here uh, from the board for the route? Yeah, just, just gathering ideas so that we can put something in, collectively put something in place and take it back to council uh, May 14th to, to make a recommendation on behalf of the board and our team as well. Can, can you tell me what the lap time, what is the lap time right now uh, to go like from, let's say you're at Whit, um, Hiawatha to go all the way to Shmishni and back. What is that lap time right now? Uh, James, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that I, I saw 20 minutes. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, well, to stimulate some discussion, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, make a motion that we uh, propose adding Fields Park and Buffalo Lodge as potential stops for the E tram, and I wonder if anyone is uh, interested in seconding that. 
I'm not interested in seconding that. I think it's too early to go <clears throat> to Buffalo Lodge with the problems of safety. I think we have to look at Fields Park and look at Metro where the stops are, <clears throat> where we turn around. There's a lot of issues there. So to make a recommendation, I'm not ready to do that. Okay, so right now there's a motion. We're looking for a second. And if there's a second, then we can have some discussion about it. I'll second. Okay, motion and a second to uh, um, make a recommendation to council that we consider adding Fields Park and Buffalo Lodge. Um, Joy, I heard you had some reservations. Did you want to expand on that anymore? No. Okay. Any other discussion about uh, making that recommendation? Um, I, I like the idea of looking at those. My criteria or concern would be expanding our uh, frequency. I think 20 minutes frequency at any one stop is kind of ideal. You get to half an hour and then we're back to the same problem with Metro. We don't, it's not serving people often enough. So I would make that uh, a criteria that I'd, I'd want to put into that equation. And I only staff could, could calculate that for us, but that's my only concern. Good point. Um, okay. Uh, any other comments about that, about the motion? I mean, I, I actually agree with, with, uh, the, both of those concerns that have been raised. Um, the motion, the motion would be, you know, really for, for consideration of that and, and for staff to make a recommendation based around that. So it's not like it's binding or something, but, um, you know, I, I definitely would say the 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 route time the the frequency is is a major concern for public transit to work you have to you have to have a reasonable uh frequency i actually even think 20 minutes is is on the long side okay well we will go ahead and take a vote uh all in favor of making a recommendation to consider addition of fields park and Buffalo Lodge, please indicate by raising your hand and say aye. 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 So I got one, two, three, four ayes and opposed. Nay. Nay. Two opposed. Okay, so that motion carries. Um, so I think what we'd like to do is is um, make that clear that we've we've pass that uh, recommendation for that consideration. And, um, you know, st staff, I would ask you to to take into account the concerns that were raised. Sure. And then uh, the, the, the second thing is that right now we're currently running um, Thursday through Sunday. We we picked uh, the peak times that right now that we that we gather and it's 10 a.m. to 4. Okay. And our recommendations you... keep our, our recommendations, uh, now that it's going to start getting busy, uh, possibly looking from 11 to 5, keep it at 10 to 4. What, what are your thoughts on that? I would think oh. you need to extend it later in the day as we get busier. People will be out and about into the evening and a lot of, a lot of people. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree too, and I think that you know the data shows that the battery life is is able to handle it. So, um, it seems like yeah, we ought to expand as we get busier in the season. We ought to expand the hours of use. With the idea of expanding, uh, do we have enough staff to do two at once, or do we anticipate doing the rotating schedule between the two? No, we, we will have the staff, so that, that's cool. not going to be a that's not that won't be a concern. So Juan, cool. you could run, you could be running. The, timeline of things that we were talking about that was brought up making the frequency greater if we have two of them so so on the two uh two of them running at the same time we we decided probably not a good idea part of that is if if uh if they go down one goes down both goes down we, we have to have a backup and we're and if we do extend let's say we do go to buffalo lodge and we extend the route distance and we're now staying later in the evening or 
now running two. I just don't know we're going to have we're going to be in situations where we may not have a tram running at all. So so being a little cautious this first summer, the initial thought was, you know, one is running and we swap it out for the second. So we can go out, we can do one tram probably longer in the day um, to be safe. But we always have a backup ready just in case one goes down. Like James was saying, the, the 80 to zero battery uh, trip, we would want a backup. Otherwise we are totally messing up our system where people are relying on something now it's gone. So, so we need to make sure we have a backup and we only have two trams. So that's number one. Number two is if we, if we also go a longer distance, which you all mentioned, several of you mentioned about the increased in time pickup, that's also going to be an issue. All that will have to be looked at. And then it sounds like to, to me, you want us to come back with our recommendations of what's possible out of those scenarios. Is that correct? Well, my understanding is you're you're going to be taking a recommendation to council before we meet again. Yeah, I think that is mid uh, mid May. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. May four May fourteen. So okay. so we we've, we've made a recommendation for consideration of those uh, additional spots. Um, the distance they go shouldn't matter, but the time the time I mean the fact that we're going to Buffalo Lodge just means that the loop will be slower. Um, it's not like it's adding extra distance in the day. It means that the loop will be slower. Um, in terms of the uh, having a backup. Um, wait, wait, Corey, can we go back to that? I, I don't think I understand. If, if we're going from like, let's say, Hiawatha to Serpentine, I'm just going to use that as the, the route. And now we're going to yep. go Buffalo Lodge to Serpentine and drop in the middle. That is a longer distance. That's going to take more battery time and increase the pickup time. And there's a lot of uh, stipulations involved with that in the tram being able to handle the extra work uh, of doing that with this battery life. Um, and it's going to slow down pickup time. So I, I just want to make sure that from a staffing perspective, I what I heard from this, this discussion was, number one, turnaround time is huge. And I agree with that 100%. When I, when I was stationed in Korea, there were about 10 minute turnarounds and everyone used the bus. So it's a big deal when you can count on it quickly. Um, the longer we go, we'll extend that time. I don't believe we have access to two trams at the same time. And I would be against that. I just don't think it's realistic to do that for this summer. Um, and so, so there's some, so I don't know, I don't want to go against necessarily the board if they're suggesting the Buffalo Lodge. We almost have, as a staff, got to figure out what that really is going to mean if we go that full route and are we going to cut back the other end so that we can make this work there's there's a lot to it well just just let me comment roy like it, it will increase the loop time but you'll be traveling the same number of miles just because you're going i mean the tram doesn't know where it is right so whether you go to to hiawatha or you go all the way to buffalo lodge the tram the, those are just miles but for sure it could impact the the loop time and i think that's a consideration well, yeah, keep in mind, though, delays as well, Corey, as as Manitou Avenue has stop and go traffic, all that is, is going to be an issue. So even if we took away distance where we are adding time to the trips um, to, to pick people up, we, we won't have access to two trams. I, I definitely can't recommend we use both. Not now until we know for sure. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a struggle, I think, to make it up Manitou Avenue um throughout a busy day where it's an, i don't know how effective it will be so if we take away the distance then we can take away the distance but we're still going to end up making it longer pickup times it, it, no no doubt if we're doing 20 minutes now and we're going to go all the way to buffalo lodge uh we're going to be adding some significant time to that so so that's that's a bigger issue for me so just well, the I, consideration. I, think, I think also roy you're right and and so is susan that when you get past 20 minutes, people aren't going to rely on it. The trams and things that I've taken over in Europe, you know, it's every 10, 15 minutes and you can count on them. And if we start out having 20 minutes, then 25 and then 30, the effectiveness will be lost. <clears throat> we really need to work on that. Yeah. So so we've, <laughs> we've, we've made a recommendation uh, to consider additional stops with a, a consideration about the uh, the pickup time. Um, I think that the distance doesn't really factor into it, but the pickup time is the major concern here. 
in order for these to be useful, it has to be frequent enough that people can count on it. Um, I would like to see us moving towards being able to use both of our shuttles at the same time as soon as we can. Saying that, I recognize this is our first year and you want to have some buffer and backup for when you have issues and it's better to be able to over deliver. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't do us a lot of good to own two and never and never be able to use both of them. Um, at some point, we have to get to where we can have confidence in the reliability. But I understand that's not that's not today yet. Probably not this. I would say not this summer. Sounds like we've got a route this season. Maybe we go with what you've got. And the suggestion, our recommendation is more of a long term uh, after you get a, a, a busy season under your belt and see how things work would be my thought. I've got another suggestion, um, is to create a route that's from uh, Fields Park area, whether that's Buffalo Lodge or the skate park, and come up to Hiawatha and not go into downtown Manitou for the reasons Roy brought up, because it's so congested, and we already have service through 36 and 33, and if we're going to use Hiawatha eventually as a mobility hub, that would be a good connector to get from one east end of town where parking is, ooh, dare I say, free and near Fields Park and utilize the outskirts and bring folks in uh, kind of into town with the with the inner, the clean electric bus versus right through the heart of downtown. That's an option, too. That way we get the miles and the less congested congestion, and we can also... Um, uh, service those free parking lots, Dylan included, when that comes available. What, while keeping a a, a, a short time, a short uh, right. frequency. Right, because, yeah, that's my suggestion. What are your thoughts on that, everybody? Well, I just think we should go with what we have right now until we get more data and not add things or change things. Because um, <clears throat> people, you know, can go to one parking lot to another and then see all the business shops and then get back. <laughs> so can I, can I ask then, cause you know, as this goes to council next month, uh, is it fair to say that the board here agrees that we should tr try not to extend the route too far to make sure we keep the times reasonable for pickup? Is that because uh, council's gonna have their say of course on where they want the route uh, of course, we'll mention the uh, the uh, the um, Buffalo Lodge uh, as a recommendation from this board, but but at the end of the day, we don't want to make the route too long so that we have decent pickup times that will encourage use. Is that fair to say from the board? Yes, I think so. And uh, if we're only going to use one, I like the idea of using both though at the same time. And I think that's something we need to have a stretch goal to get to there as quickly as possible. And uh, if one becomes offline, well, then so be it. Then the, the, the picket times will even be longer, but just saving it for the time being, I, I don't like that as much. So that's another. Well, if, if you're on the Sorry. tram though, Rolf, and it's 85 or 90 degrees and it stops in the middle of the road and you have 20 people on or 15 and you can't do anything to get them off and get them safe. I think until we know the capabilities of the trams, um, we have to be very careful. It's it's more than just having one or two, it's have safety of people. And what happens if one goes down from 80 to zero? And you have kids, yeah. you have elderly, and you have young people, and you just leave them in the road and hope for the best that someone can get to them with little carts. I mean, you well, have the, to the, think about people. If, if, if one did go down, those people are all gonna have to get off. I mean, it would take, <laughs> A half hour to get another tram going anyway so we're not going to be going i don't know if it would take a half we don't hour. have somebody standing by with one to come pick it up so I, well they have communication yeah but then we'd so, have to have a so, drive so um rolf i know you've got to get going we had uh yeah i'm sorry we, we, i'm sorry about that guys but i have a school function i have to go to so just before you jump off rolf uh, we, we had a suggestion from luke that i thought was compelling you know we, we passed a motion for considering extending the route with a strong consideration of the of uh, the loop times luke's suggestion was why don't we alter the route so that it doesn't just duplicate what mountain metro does and provide a connection from hiawatha to fields and or Buffalo Lodge and per, and um, that east end of town that might make it more convenient for 
people to not even come into town. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested to see if, if the board would like to make a recommendation around that. That particular one, I'm I'm not a favor of that because that is so low usage. Even going to Buffalo Lodge is going to be used low usage. So I was just saying that was for consideration, mm -hmm. but not going in the, the the heart of downtown Manitou. I think that we need to keep the visibility going and uh, not stopping it to come through the major part of town. Okay. Any any other comments on on Luke's suggestion? Oh, I, I thought it was very creative and definitely something to be looking at creatively and for city council to look at maybe, but uh, I, I kind of with joy at the moment, it feels like we may want to dip our toe in with what we've got and then uh, see how it goes for a season. I, I definitely can let the board know that if, you know, when the summer goes you know, the first month, you know, we're going to be looking at how these trams are are working. And if, if it's possible to run two at once and we feel confident in that, uh, we would love to do that because we know that would also just improve the whole system. So so we're going to be watching for that. We'll be a little cautious early, but we do plan on definitely using them um, if we can and we'll feel comfortable. We're not going to, you know, go out of business with all the trams because uh, whatever reasons, right? We don't know yet. So, but I, I, yeah, we will, we will maintain that, that uh, vigilance of the tram use and how the battery life is happening. And, and can we, can we do that and uh, do it effectively? So we'll, we'll make sure we keep track of that. And that was kind of our plan anyway, to kind of see how they go early on and then see what's possible. So. Yeah. And, and Corey, my, my, my thoughts were to keep everything as is, they just extend the hours till six o'clock, possibly six o'clock. I think by extending those hours and the battery life, then we would be able to get a good idea if we can, you know, run to them at one time and maybe stretch, stretch, expand the route up, up, you know, out a little bit more. Okay. Um, well, we, we've talked about this for a long time. I, I, I would like to say, I, I would like to see um, some expansion of the data that we're recording so that we could move more swiftly to a situation where we could we could rely on both trams. Um, I think you've got the indication from the board that we're interested in expanding, but we want to we want to make sure that we're able to deliver and be reliable for people so we can get good adoption. So um, I think I think we're hearing a, a s support for. Uh, carefully expanding from what we've got right now, and um, and it may be an expansion of of data acquisition, but we don't want to uh, increase the loop time. Is that fair, everyone? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to staff reports. You're up again, Juan. Let me just have the PowerPoint up. Put her next. Uh, next. Yeah, so last month we uh, we provided just a monthly uh, pike ride statistics. Uh, this month we were able to provide uh, the all quarterly the statistics for the quarter. And as you can see from 23 and 24, uh, it, as it gets busier, the numbers will, will uh, we do see a, a slight increase as our months come ahead after from February to March. Okay. Next slide. Highest trips per week were uh, 225.24 and uh, that, was, that happened to be a, a weekend, which was the highest number at 45. And uh, I shared with you in the last meeting that we were looking at the Pike Ride um, exit, Pike Ride locations. So we went to the so we went to City Council. They pretty much approved all the locations, uh, for the exception of one. 
So I wanted to start by showing the existing locations, which is at Shriver, Lulu's, and uh, Hiawatha. This is what we currently have right now. Um, these are the additional bike locations that City Council approved. The only one that they didn't approve was uh, which, uh, the exit at Wichita, Wichita lot. So the new Tubby's was one that was recommended by City Council. And then the prospect was a new location that we were looking at inside the, the prospect lot. So Juan, do you, do you have a time frame for when those are going to be installed? Is that all approved and you're moving ahead? Yes, we're going to be sending an email to uh, City Council and just make sure that they they have everything in front of them to give us uh, the okay to go ahead and move forward. And we're, we're looking at getting these installs in the, in the next month, this next coming month. Great, thank you. And then uh, we we sent everybody the parking uh, the progressive parking new rates uh, that we're gonna that we do every quarter, and we have the new rates that are gonna be going in effect uh, May first. Uh, we send that to everyone so you can take a look at it and just want to know if you have any questions on that. Um, th thanks for sharing those. I understand now that um, the progressive parking rates are uh, set administratively, so those aren't. When you make a change, those are not, uh, it's not a council approval situation, right? And so so you're informing us about what's going on? Pretty much, yeah. Like yep. right now, I'm just re uh, showing everybody the, the new rates for the new quarter. Great. And um, I did notice, uh, it's probably coming later in your reports. I mean, there, there was a couple of uh, uh, C-click fix concerns about the operation of the parking system. Can you just give us a, a like a high level overview um, are you feeling good about the way it's working? There were there were some glitches. Are you on top of those and uh, things are working okay? Yeah, no, for, for the C-Click fixes, they, they've been working out great. Uh, initially, uh, of course, everything that comes to our department, we have a timeline to to meet. Uh, and we we usually address those before the, the, the end of the timeline and we get those addressed. But well, we, I mean, we, specifically with, with, the, with the parking system, there were... Hey, the printer's not working, and I was trying to pay, and I couldn't. And that that kind of thing. Are you Those talking are... about the? Are you talking about the kiosks? The yeah. PlayStation kiosks. Okay, yeah. So we we did have a an upgrade, a software upgrade, which require us to uh, replace a lot of the printers, and most of them have been changed. Um, James, uh, that's a hundred percent now, correct? We have one that was a more or less a dud. Um, it works part of the time. Some of the times it inexplicably does not. Um, I've taken a look at it and I, uh, it, there's just weird behavior with it. Um, so I, I need to get um, another one sent out to us. Um, but all of the other ones have been replaced and that issue has been mostly resolved. Okay. Th thanks, James. I think, you know, that we, we, we do hear the feedback. Gosh, it costs a lot to park in Manitou. Um, space costs money. Parking is at a premium. We do want to make sure that the system is working uh, as, as uh, optimally as possible. So um, th thanks for treating that as a high priority and, and making the fix to the system. So it's one thing if it costs a lot, but we want to make sure that it's at least uh, workable for people. So, so thanks for having that as a priority. It also, I, I probably should throw in here real quick um, because I don't know if it's going to be brought up tonight, but we are looking at uh, fixing up the Hiawatha lot as well. To your point, Corey, it is important if we are charging uh, some, some, uh, you know, I won't say high pricing is what it's worth. The park in Manitou, we got to make sure that our lots are uh, um, inviting and, and quality. So, We'll be doing some work in Hiawatha here, uh, I believe, in uh, hopefully early May before summer and have it uh, cleaned up um, and, and looking better. The other lots are looking pretty good, but we'll address that one. So I just want to throw that out there so you all know that that parking lot will look better. Thanks for that. Okay, keep going on. Uh, next slide. Yeah, I just wanted. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm point to ponder. I did want to point out from, you know, uh, on page 44 from Donald Shoup, uh that states that he everything wants to be needs to be at a, that result he everything needs to be at an amount that results in an 85% occupancy and that that ties into like our progressive rates and one what one of the things that i mentioned last month that is i think it's very important is that he wanted to remind everybody that when it was introduced in 1935 you know a lot of the store owners wanted to improve re revenue by creating more turnover and yeah, encouraging workers park elsewhere. So now, you know, whenever somebody does, you know, suggest raising the the parking and price, it's always the local merchants who are fighting it, fighting it the hardest. You know, where they want to keep it the opposite, the other way around. But that's what's worked over the years, and that's a that's a big recommendation that he's made of having employees park elsewhere instead of you know next to their their stores. Anyways, just wanted to make that comment for that. Juan, are you, are you getting pushback from businesses uh, about these rates regularly, or? Um, uh, very few. Very. We haven't. We. It's been very minimal. Okay. And mostly, it's been from employees. Uh, but once once we offer, once we have we have offered like the rates that we have for the local lots, um, you know the they know they're getting a very good deal, you know, for the amount of parking that they have for the year. Like the prospect lot, uh, the rate that we have there, I believe it's like $60 for the entire year. Um, and, you know, they they can't complain, especially when they, they know that other rates are a lot higher in other cities, nearby cities. Okay, and any right. other comments on that from the from the board? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, back to the, the slide before. Yeah, right there. So um Roy, did you have did you have any comments on the traffic calming program? Uh, I didn't, I thought that was taken off the agenda after I okay. talked to Corey, but I guess technically I did respond to the folks that were in the audience on our traffic, two traffic calming measures that we're working on. Uh, Correct. Right so I guess I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, James, you want to go ahead and talk? Can, about, can I uh, just, can I just jump in on that? Cause it was an inquiry from last time. And so um, just so everyone is on the same page with this, there is a traffic calming program um it it meets at the discretion of um Roy what hat are you wearing when when at your discretion you you form that committee I guess it, it's as the traffic engineer yeah so if if we get a calming uh, uh traffic calming request which are available online for people to submit um they have to follow certain procedures which include getting a, a, a petition from the neighborhood and et cetera uh, once they submit that, then I normally visit them uh, in that area where they want to meet and explain their situation. Uh, we set up uh, um, speed devices to be able to capture speeds and number of vehicles in the area. And then, and you know, nine times out of 10, probably 100% of the time, it's about speeding on the traffic calming. Very little of other requests, but it's mostly based on speeding initially. Um, and that's what we've had come through the system. Um, so we check on the speed data. If the speed data shows that it's very low um, and not an issue, just a, you know, random, which you're going to get anywhere, uh, then I let them know that there's no data. I show them the data, and, and there's no reason for us to continue for traffic calming based on the speed. Um, and so we leave it at that. If if there's additional questions, or or like in the case of Washington. There's additional issues, but speeding is not one of them. Their average speed on that street is 18 miles per hour. Um, but there are other concerns that are uh, something we're worried about as well. And so we're looking at some solutions there. And that's when we met with the traffic calming committee. So if if I have something that shows there's actually an issue with, with trying to do some traffic calming, 
uh, mostly again speeds because that's generally what people are complaining about. Um, then we will I will get that traffic calming committee together. We'll discuss the issue um, and then see if there's anything we can do from there. If the traffic calming committee wants to try some uh, first solutions, and those tend to be uh, just changing the speed limit possibly or some signage. We always start low and then we go from there. Okay, I think I think the high level update is there is a, a traffic calming committee that works um, when needed, and um, there is there is an avenue for citizens to have uh, uh, to raise a concern, and we heard examples of that, and it was I think it was great for us to know that that exists, and um, and that you know they they get addressed. So the, the board exists; it meets when it needs to, and. Um, uh, there's an there's an avenue for for the public to raise their concerns. So, so I think I'll just... for when that for when sorry guys, but when that doesn't work. So we just heard from from Joan earlier when all of that doesn't work and the cries don't work. I mean, what's upsetting to me is that she's talked to the local police and they have ignored her. I mean, at what point? Where do we go when every everything has stepped up to go through these? um these channels and they're still not successful um, i mean that's a major one well, right I, I think that you have to be careful and look at the data about that you can't automatically say it's not working or the police haven't responded or no one's doing anything i think we need more information um just to say without other entities being able to say well this is what we're doing um and just say oh well this person said you're not i mean it, you know we have to let the system work Sure, but I mean, to even to some extent, lowering the speed limit doesn't mean anything if you're not going to have any enforcement. Well, it does for a lot of people that don't speed. And and team, I'm just going to try to keep us on track here. So I think we are wandering a little off of what's the purview of our of our of our board here. Um, there is an avenue for the public to bring this up. I think enforcement of speeding laws is not really something that we're in a position to to make recommendations on right now. So it's it's been brought up. It's an open issue. Um, there's been some uh, some remedies have been implemented, and there's some monitoring happening. And I don't see another action for this board right now, unless I'm mistaken. I'd be happy to hear if you guys think I'm wrong. But I think we're getting a little off topic for what the the map board is uh, is supposed to do. Corey, I can just quickly respond um, to Luke. Um, so if if once someone puts in a petition, if they're after we give it time, and time could be several months, we have to give it time to see if it's working. We gain some more data, and then we start testing again to see if we had success. Um, if we get continued complaints. Uh, we look at the data and we we try to see okay are there improvements are there are there enough improvements or do we have to take a next step so it, the system's not done yet the 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 how the path goes forward it hasn't been complete but it takes time um, and again you have other sides of the story of other people who want something different so so we take our time to a degree but um, to your point we do continue that it's still open we're still monitoring it since it's been put open. And we try to see if we're getting some success and and that's the process and we're in right now we do that with every traffic call so thank cool. you thank you okay let's keep moving i think juan you've got the floor okay um we're going over the circulate click fixes and the mountain metro ridership um go ahead james yeah, so for the secret fixes, um, we had uh, 13 um, requests that were created um, in the month of March. All 13 have been resolved. Uh, majority of these requests um, were regarding vehicle issues, so uh, vehicles parked in ways that were causing issues uh, one way or another. Um, uh, we uh, did have a, a kiosk uh, complaint that was in there due to just the, the overall appearance of the machine, um, which was handled. We replaced some of the decals and removed a, a older fading uh, decal on that. Um, and then we did have a couple of signage requests as well. Um, but that's that's pretty much 
uh, what we were looking at for the month of March. I just want to say thanks for including those. I'm still um, getting used to seeing them and learning about them. So um, I don't want to dig into any particular one. Um, I see that I did notice that a lot of them get closed by saying, hey, we've put it into our work order system. So that closes the C-click fix. Um, is, I'm wondering if there's an easy way to know, you know, to, to follow up and, and know what the outcome is. Is that an, an easy thing to connect and to, to close up? Because a, a lot of these say, okay, it's an issue. We've turned it into a work order. We're closing the C-click fix. Um, yeah. Just yes. just closing this, the C-click fix isn't the isn't the goal. The goal is to fix the problem. Yeah, this this sure. is uh, our system uh, for for the city for reporting of issues, and then we sometimes we can respond directly in there if it's something that has to be a few days out, a couple weeks out. Because sometimes those systems, then we put in our work order system for us to do. And and yes, it would be difficult to try to go to back to this. So we close them out. We move it to our work order. Um, because then it's on our plate to get it done. If if they find that there's still a problem, they're always welcome to put another one in and then we will respond why there was any delays or something. But yeah, this is how the system works. And the ones that were moved to work orders, uh, the, the work orders were completed and closed out as well. Um, so there's not any any outstanding work orders or requests um, resulting in the the month of March. I have, um, I have one from before that that hasn't been looked at. How do I follow up with a, like a personal one? I asked for a parking spot to be removed right in front of the post office area, um, and it was reported to put into the system, and I just never heard back. And it's still a parking spot, so it's still a pain to pull in and drop your mail. Okay. Yeah, I Luke, know it's not the time and question, place for it, but I do. Just yep. since you brought it up, set, saying that there were none, I know for a fact there's one. So I don't mean to di divulge there. Luke, yeah. Luke, put in the second request. Put in another one, and then of course we'll look at if that was missed. Of course, we don't mean that to happen, but we do get many requests, and and so it becomes another job almost. And we don't have, you know, I do get them all, so I do try to monitor that, um, but. But if you see that no nothing happened and it's still an issue, just take another picture. You can say you reported it before, and then uh, I get them anyway, and I'll be definitely checking in what happened. But it's a good question. It's not a perfect system, uh, but that's what I would suggest you do to to remedy that. If anything, we miss. Uh, Luke, Luke, just to answer you, it, uh, Luke, just to answer answer your question, that that was taken care of like the third week uh, when you put in that request. And I can send you pictures, and if you go over there, you will see uh, we created a, a fire lane in that area so that there wouldn't be any issues like with the, the mailbox. I'll definitely take a look. Thank you. All right. Okay, well, we'll, we'll keep moving. I, I do want to say thank you for including that, and I think we're going to get some more practice with looking at these and, and, um, and, and seeing ways that we might be able to provide recommendations. Should we keep going? And then uh, any questions regarding Metro uh, ridership numbers for the month of March? Thanks for sharing the data. I didn't really dig into it or anything, but I'm again glad to have this data and we can we can start getting used to to looking at it and see if we can make recommendations in future. And I think that was it for our report, Juan. Did you have anything else? Uh no, that's that that's basically it. So I think we're now moving into the book, uh, the book study here. Is that right? Sure, we are. That? That's that's the next item. Okay. 
So 6.38, we are going to keep this to under 20 minutes. So we'll uh, jump on in. And Juan, did you want to lead us off here or how would you like to do this? Yeah, we, we, we could just go through the reading. Um, this whole, this whole uh, section was uh, mostly on biking. So the the one thing we could start off with is that by reading this section, uh, what is Manitou's Springs already doing well in this area? Yeah, the, the, the first, there's three parts. The first one is mix the uses, right? Correct. Um, so I've got some notes. Uh, what I'd like to do is make sure everyone's got a chance to share their comments on each section. Um, Next maybe, slide, James. Well, on the, the way my the way I've I've looked at these and the way my brain works is I I just looked at each uh each chapter and made some com comments on it. I'm not sure how others wanted to approach it, um, but really interested to hear people's people's input here. Um, the the first the first one was talking about a, attainable housing downtown. Um, and I know we have we've got fairly good mixed use uh, commercial and residential downtown. I don't know if you'd call it attainable or not. Um, we don't have a highly urbanized area downtown and we don't have much mixed use outside of the downtown area, but for the downtown, we do have, we do have fairly good mixed use, including schools was my observation. And I, I wasn't able to identify any big opportunities on that front. I would concur with that. I felt like we're doing well with our walkability of our schools and parks in uh, Manitou compared to most cities. And I think the issues about um, housing and land use laws, you know, we're, we work with those all the time with land use. We've done a lot of changes and updating. Our parks are, are pretty amazing how we care for them and develop more parks. Um, the chapter they had on schools about being so negative about charter schools. I think that ship has already sailed a while ago about school choice in Colorado. So I'm not sure that was obtaining to us. Housing any place in Manitou is an issue and, and there's a committee and uh, different groups looking at what we can do to alleviate some of the housing problems. So I think some parts of the chapter were, were interesting to read, some were outdated, um, some would not work for Manitou. Um, others were doing well with is I looked at it holistically from all the chapters. Great comments. Um, I, I do know, like if we talk about schools, I know we've got a lot of we've got a lot of choice in students. And I think, you know, we have this issue just like visitors coming here. We have a lot of students that come here every single day by car and there may be some opportunities to improve on that. I think there's, you know, there's a bus system, but I think for most of the choice students that they're coming in by cars, the opportunity I'd love to see uh, in the school system would be more use of bikes and the pike ride system. I think uh, there was a comment, maybe it's in, in a later chapter of saying that uh, the topography is not an influence. I can't really agree with that. I think the topography of Manitou makes it challenging to be a bike rider and the uh, advent of e-bikes um, really opens up those opportunities. And it'd be great to see if that could be incorporated into the schools a bit more so that we don't have uh, the, the traffic jams related to school uh, school kids. Well, I, I think you'll find that most parents in the 2024 <clears throat> are not going to put their children on buses or have them on pike ride on the roads. They're gonna drive them and drop them off. And there's always gonna be um, congestion around a school at opening and closing times, but it clears up pretty rapidly. <clears throat> I'm not sure we're ready to have a student coming from downtown Colorado Springs on a bus and then an e-bike. Most parents are going to, <clears throat> for safety and knowing their children, they're not going to do that yet. It's not something <clears throat> I see happening. I, I think you're right, Joy, and I think um, that speaks to the need for us to improve the safety of other modes of, of transportation in Manitou. But I, I think you're right today. Um, pe people are concerned for safety. 
I think another another good thing that that I read is um on the you know just coming up with the consensus consensus on like the terminology because many people you know they see bike lanes as paths, boulevards, tracks, uh, shadow lanes. So I think it's important to. I thought that was like that's something that really stood out to me. Um, and also like doing an inventory on identifying all these so that uh, we, we could put them in place and and build a master map for that. So there's no confusion. Oh, I like that. So, so doing an inventory in Manitou of where do we have paths, lanes, boulevards, uh, and bikeways. Correct. That's a really good idea. The other one is like uh, that I I know is uh, really stood out is uh, an inventory of the signage that's out there for safety, uh, road markings that can make a difference as well. I agree. That would be very helpful one <clears throat> to know where all the streets and what we can do. I don't think we have boulevards yet. Um, like they do in Berkeley, but I think, <laughs> you know, it's a nice, it's a nice right. thing to think about. Um, but I think having a, some kind of, understanding and even a little map you could give out at the um, chamber just saying oh these are some really places where you can get e-bikes and where you can take them and which roads would work and which ones won't and I think something like that is always valuable to people correct you know just just on that topic so uh, chapters 57 and 58 were the bike boulevards and the cycle tracks um and I wondered if, so, you know, we've got this acknowledged problem that we don't have a clear way of getting from Colorado Springs safely into Manitou. And we've been talking about El Paso. Um, what, what jumped out to me was, you know, is there room for a cycle track on El Paso? I'm not sure. Um, would we be interested in trying a bike boulevard? And that's where I get back to this idea about having um, a pilot, you know, it'd be, I'm I'm very interested to try out some different configurations on El Paso and see, you know, see if we could see what might work the best and what has an impact on traffic volumes and and travel times, uh, mean speeds and peak speeds, um, in order to to make decisions. But, you know, we clearly in Manitou we don't have the option of picking between ten streets that that we might choose to try one of these on. There's only just a couple of a couple of options. Um, El, El Paso is the one that that you know, continues to bubble up for me as one that we ought to try some things and have some way of, of judging whether it's working or not. Yeah. And I agree, Corey, I, I think uh, in building that master plan is to be, just be very uh, strategic also uh, because when it, it, we focus and identify like some of the main roads that are, that people will use for biking, uh, people will follow that versus having people that are biking that are scattered all over the place. Uh, I, I think that's important so that uh, to encourage more biking for, for people to get out there. It is a bit of a shame that we uh, got some really great new pavement over on the east end of town and PPRTA ran that project and we've got Sharrows, you know, and, and chapter 62 is all about how Sharrows don't work. Um, unfortunately, that's been that's been a solution and continues to be a solution. And the, the Sharrow signs are beautiful, but it's not really safe infrastructure. And meanwhile, those streets are really, really wide. We ought to be do, able to do something better than that. Um, so that that's that's kind of a recent disappointment is just seeing that brand new infrastructure put in and, and Sharrows were added there. And I think that's, not Manitou Springs, if I'm if I'm right, it's a PPRTA project, and and we weren't all that involved in that. Is that correct? Are you talking about the the WAP area there, the east part of town? That that was that project with um, El Paso County and Colorado Springs, right? URA was involved with that. There's a big sign that says funded by PPRTA, and I think you're right. It's County and Springs, so. Yeah. 
Um, nice green color. <laughs> yeah, they're they're beautiful, but you know, if you if you believe the book, it's it's clearly not safe infrastructure. So, so Corey, I do have a question because I read in the book though that it does say, and so just correct me if I'm wrong, but it said that sharrows are still used when it's a slow, smaller streets. So, are you strictly talking the the larger, faster streets? Because it does state that in the chapter. And I, I just needed some education on sharrows then, if that, if I'm incorrect on how I read that. Um. I've got the book here and I can kind of look into it. My, my basic opinion is shells are not the right infrastructure. Like there's data that shows. Um, they're, they're definitely not preferred compared to any other form of bike infrastructure. Yeah. The, the cycle tracks, all those are definitely much better. Um, even but a painted on bike lane would be better in that area, although it's not that safe. And that that's a really wide road. So why why the choice so, was made to have a sharrow, I'm not sure. Yeah, so on page page 147, uh, the last paragraph, it talks about uh, it can also be useful to add sharrows to narrow, slow streets. Um, so there is a use form, but for larger roads, sharrows are, uh, you know, not a good thing to do. So and to your point, it says, <laughs> yeah, right. To to your point, you're talking about that is considered a larger street, in my opinion, and more traffic. And I agree with you 100 percent Poor poor design planning on that. Maybe it was that was way back when. So I don't know when Cheryl's got out of favor in that arena, but it, it's been a few years since that thing was completed. So. But I agree with you. But but when we look just for my knowledge, when we look for the narrow, smaller roads, like we have a lot of those in Manitou, if we ever to make, you know, warnings to people about some bike use, it seems like Sheros could be better than nothing because you can't do much in those small neighborhoods. So. Yeah, that, that's why I think like doing an inventory on all, like, on all the bike, the current bike paths, you know, especially when it comes to curb cuts and, and curbs, you know, and we help identify that. Um, it'll be a big positive, you know, for, you know, people who are bikers. And I would think that identifying limited number of, of primary biking, uh, routes is kind of the extent. I mean, people are going to bike wherever they bike. You could put a Shero on every single road in town. So I would say, uh, our, our job would be more, or our, priority would be the master uh, boulevards or what we think are the routes that would be uh, truly places we could uh, have safe uh, for so facilities for bicycles as opposed to, yes, just putting sharrows on roads. I my, my overall comment is to avoid that temptation to put sharrows. The city of Colorado Springs does that all the time and they are very unsafe roads because they throw those on there cars still uh, go way too fast and there's no shoulder for bicyclists. So I, I'm not sure that that's a good answer or a safe answer. And I don't encourage it for our community. I think our, our priority, our time would be better spent looking at a few really good options rather than trying to mark everything. <laughs> yeah. So identifying those, those major roads then, you know, of course, Manitou Avenue, which is a CDOT road. So that's other uh, ha hampers things for us, but El Paso, as Corey mentioned, um, you know, probably the connection to El Paso somehow. So that's going to be across um, Becker's, some maybe, or something like that, or Old Man's uh, Trail, or um, the other, I can't remember the other road. And then you have Crystal Hills Boulevard, you have CPR, you have Ruxton. So some of those major ones is what we focus on. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'd say so. I think. Putting sharrows onto tiny roads, there isn't a whole lot of value there. What we want to do is identify the safe routes, the main routes in and out of Manitou, and make those truly safe. And sharrows are not the way to do that. Okay, so some, something to think about, like El Paso, for example, is the, the width of the road. And we did put sharrows in certain corners because it just doesn't have the width. Like you, there's no way to do it. So I, so that would be an expansion of the road 
which of course, as you know, El Paso is also a challenge because of either a cliff um, on one side and, you know, so, so that's where we, we're guidance too on how we handle those bad corners. And, and I don't know. I, don't well, I, think, I think I think there are other solutions out there, Roy, and that's where I'm interested in some pilots, you know, because, yeah. um, you know, you know, the concept of the the Voonerf, right, or the, the bike boulevard. So huh. prioritizing biking while still allowing traffic and, you know, seeing does does this really have a significant uh, negative impact on car travel time? Um, and, you know, we could try it out because, you know, there is space. It's not immutable that you can't reduce a car lane width um we don't well, have to take down we don't have to take down a cliff to put in some some uh temporary bike infrastructure on el paso well we we actually have brought the street diet down to as far as we could so so it left a little bit of a lip but not in some of those corners it's it's like i don't know a foot so we we have some areas that are are not passable unless you i don't know how you do it so you could have a slow flow uh, type setup where you're you don't have a center lane and you make people go slower. That is a a technique through the Mallet Traffic Code or a yield flow, but that road is a little bit too busy for that. I don't think it would be recommended. So we still ha we do have areas there, Corey, that will be a big challenge on how we maneuver bikes through there, like you would like to. Unless uh, where you talk about the bike boulevard, my guess is we're putting in. I don't know how we're going to do that to slow to, to slow the cars down and make it protected for bikes, because to me that could be almost like a shero unless we have things that are slowing down cars. So that's a, that's an interesting discussion. I just I guess I need more clarification as we move forward on this of what that could be because I'm not even sure in some of those locations. Well, you know, I live off of El Paso, and you know, you would need five to seven feet really to get a boulevard in there. <laughs> and there just isn't the space. It's not just, you, you can only squeeze so much into there. And even the lanes that we have there, you know, end and start. And so it's it's really a problematic place because you also have a large population of residents who live there and would be very outspoken if they couldn't get to where they need to get to work, to stores, to school, all those things that people go to. There's There's... I think there's a falsity that you think there's not many residential people on by Fields Park and up in the hills, but there are lots and lots of people. And you have to be careful that you balance people that must use car transportation, hopefully electric, and um, and bikes. And it is a problem. I mean, it'd be nice to get a solution. I agree with Roy. If there's a way to do it, I think we can talk about it. But it's not as easy as just making the road narrower. Well, I think, you know, th there are solutions that have been tried in other places, and that's that's the reason why we we need to be thinking about pilots. But yeah, I mean, we, we need to be creative, but I'll just say there is not continuous flow of traffic in two directions at all times on that road. So th there are things we could try and measure. Um, you know, I, I, nobody nobody is trying to to say that there's not uh, a significant number of residents that need to use that road, but there are things that we could try and and make some measurements. And and we we have we have to be thinking creatively. We we can't create more space. Well, we can think creatively, but I I just pilots are not the solution too. I think we need to look at what we're doing. <laughs> I would disagree with that. Corey, I, I think one of the things that will help us too, as we draft our own uh, bike master plan, is to look at other cities uh, and see what they're that already have master mass, biking master plans in place, such as uh, Seattle's a big one, and just get we could get a lot of information from these cities that have taken years to uh, to put together. Yeah, and I think you know we 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 also need to we need to look for some cities, some small cities in canyons that are are. Uh, have got some of the same constraints that we've got. Um, sure. C Seattle's got different constraints. That, of course, we should look at that, but c cities more like Manitou that only have, you know, a couple of options and, and what kinds of things have they tried? I, I totally agree. Um, okay, well, Juan, we've kind of jumped around on uh, these chapters. I mean, and I probably... Yeah, 
I promised we wouldn't spend more than 20 minutes. We're getting close to that now. Okay. Um, I would invite any other uh, sort of uh, closing comments on, on the book study and also would invite, you know, if you've, if you've got some thoughts and notes and you want to share them with the group and share them with Juan, he's, he is going to be compiling our feedback on the, on the book report. So um, that's something I might do. I've got little notes on each of the chapters and I might just send that in to you for your consideration, Juan. Sure. Was there anything uh, uh, else of high priority that people wanted to share related to the book study? I, I think it's important. It's just that, you know, we're, we're getting close slide to change. two hours now. Yeah. Next slide. Final takeaways. Yeah. Hey, I guess I'll I'll share one thing, and we did, you know cell cy cycling is probably a big thing, and and I think what Juan brought up and and Corey and I mean Joy, I mean everyone's talked about at some point is is going to be you know how do we sell bikes in Manitou, and it does come down to having safe routes. So, you know, everything I can understand, you're not, you're not going to have children on the road, just like to Joy's point, even school children, and, and they're not going to do it unless there's a safe route path. So that's something we got to consider. What are the possibilities in Manitou and, and how realistic that is? Because it, it would cost a lot of money for infrastructure change, because a lot of that is the roads and the way they're built. Um, the big thing with Pike Ride, I know for a fact, and I know Juan's going to keep track of this, is going to be improvement from year to year. Um, council wants to see that bikes are increasing in use and that data is gonna be very important to start changing maybe the minds of those who don't want as many bikes because you have those that love their cars and don't want necessarily other mobility options and they're afraid that's gonna take over their uh, way of uh, living. And so how do they work together? And, and I can tell you from my side of the uh, story in being with public services and as a deputy, I, I get complaints on the other end too. I mean, like that, that bicyclists are being um, aggressive and, and that's starting to happen more and more. So I guess part of this is how do we, how do we make sure that, that we're, we're thinking about people who drive vehicles like cars, how does that work with bicyclists and, and how do we live in harmony at the end of the day? Uh, cars won't go away. Bikes are definitely increasing. People do want to walk more, and then how do we make that work for everybody? Is going to be kind of this the task of this uh, board as a, for a future of Manitou. So that's where I'll end my statement. So Roy, I just want to make sure I got this straight. You got you have people driving cars that are concerned for their safety because of the behavior of cyclists. Um, because of some behavior of cyclists, they feel that they are causing a, a hazard on the road that will make them swerve the miss them purposely being done to uh, because they don't want to hit the bicyclist but they, because of the actions of certain certain cyclists not everybody obviously but they're um, whether they're yelling at them cussing at them at stop signs or even physically with their bikes trying to impede those are the kind of things i have also gotten some complaints about so, so it can go both ways, obviously, you know, if, if we're going to convince the automobile driver who's not, doesn't want to ride bike, you know, that, that they need to accept bikes. I think it's important. Education is all around. And I think it, it talks about in walkable city rules too, a little bit about that, that collaboration and getting, getting the drivers of the cars to, to understand and accept the bicyclist. Uh, a lot of that comes down to that, that, how we approach uh, when we start moving forward on these these new bicycle uh, and mobility options. You know, how, do we remember how the people want to use the car and the importance for some people of the car is, you know, the elderly to get to certain locations and people that live further away. So so it's just something that, that was talked about a little bit in the book, too, on, on that perspective. And I, I think it's important we think about it because I have been part of some of those conversations not as many. I think I probably get a little bit more. I don't get many bike complaints either, to be honest with you, but um, but I am getting a few more. And it's not always just bicyclists complaining about aggressive drivers. It's uh, some drivers saying that they felt like they were being uh, purposely uh, impeded with their actions of the bicyclists. Um, 
and causing them maybe to to lose control or something. And with that too, there's also the category of folks that are on the, the creek walk trails and folks on brand new e-bikes that are um, just hauling ass past them, yeah. right? And they don't have sure. a common understanding and common courtesy or maybe, you know, for some folks don't necessarily know how to ride a bike. I mean, they can balance and, and ride, but for some of these e-bikes, man, that they go. And so I think education is a really key piece um, for all sides. So thanks for bringing that up, Roy. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, my, my my final my, my final takeaway was um you know reading the 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 book recommended the urban bikeway design guide by it's NACTO. and then the other thing is uh the that brought brought my attention is not. Uh -oh. the cycling culture today so i think anytime we want to do a, a pilot we want to be very strategic and really have a plan in place to uh to proceed with that but that that was my final takeaway all right thanks everyone um let's let's keep moving here uh, next item on the agenda, item eight is reports. Uh, I think we've gone through our reports. Um, and item nine is uh, old business, revisit potential requirements for infrastructure pilots. Um, and I think this was put on the agenda at my request. I think we've had some some good discussion about pilots today. Um, unless anyone objects, I, I don't think we need to go in deeper into the discussion about pilots at this time. So I will move us on now to board correspondence uh, and future agenda items. Does anyone on the board have uh, something they want to share or a, a concern they want to bring up, uh, something that we should try to get on a future agenda? Hey, hey Corey, I don't know if Natalie is still uh, listening in right now, but she did a uh, send to me uh i think it was grand junction i can't remember on a uh a, oh durango they called a parklet natalie i'm trying to remember the name it was a it was in in durango yeah they called it a pedlet but it's basically it's a sidewalk that would go where a traditional parklet would go so that the sidewalk becomes the space for a restaurant and then the parking spot becomes the sidewalk. And so it's kind of a reverse so that those areas are closer to the restaurant themselves. And it just felt very safe and was nicely done. So I had taken a photo of it because I think like all of you, when I travel, I take photos of things that are working when it comes to mobility. So. And, and Natalie, you had mentioned to me like the, the, the concern that some people had had, had in town is you got a restaurant, they start using the sidewalk for seating mm -hmm. and then it, it blocks up the sidewalk. Um, and I'm wondering, are, are we doing that now in Manitou? I'm, I'm trying to think of if we've got any, uh, any restaurants that are applying to or are wanting to use more space than uh, and to spill out into the sidewalk. I don't know the status of Armadillo Ranch, but I know that area was problematic in terms of how many different things were happening in that space. And that would be a tough one to put the pedlet because you're right in the roundabout, really, aren't you? I haven't really looked, honestly, to see, but I just think that that would be an interesting area to look at. Yeah. For an opportunity for that. But I think when you put the parklet in, it's awkward, right? And even when you make them look nice, it maybe doesn't look that great. And this was a different situation because you could make a sidewalk in theory look nicer and have a nice kind of fence along the edge between the the vehicles and uh, the pedestrians so i don't know anyway yeah like basically basically use the rest the the sidewalk for additional restaurant seating mm -hmm. take up some parking to make the the place for the ada mm -hmm. approved uh mm -hmm. sidewalk yeah it's just another tool to consider yeah there may, maybe a future pilot and we mm -hmm. try one out and because the the sidewalk is wooden and it's easy to it look like they even have plans at other cities how to build them so we could probably build it um and then you put it in and you pull it out when you're ready you know so it's kind of a neat idea to try it maybe in a 
few mm -hmm. parking spots and see how it, how it works. Thought it was kind of a unique thing. So appreciate Natalie passing that on. And we could always discuss it if we wanted to try something as a pilot. So. Maybe we need to talk to some businesses and find out some businesses that that might be interested in in um, you know collaborating on that. It okay. also those real quick on those they do work really nicely, especially when you have conjoining restaurants right next to each other. Right. right? So the first spot that comes to mind would go from Armadillo maybe all the way down to Flying Eagle, right? That I me, mean, that's a lot, right? But that storefront section right there, right in front of Sahara Cafe, they they use outdoor seating. Um, just places that, I don't know, those are my two cents. Just conjoining them to make it a whole section versus having them sporadic and then a big truck parking between the two. Like that's awkward. Yeah, I like the idea. I think it, it on some level it would have to be driven by a business that that was looking for a bit more space, and so maybe we can keep in mind to to, to discuss with some businesses. When that first rolled out in Durango, I lived in Durango, and the businesses were the ones that shouldered the costs on those, and they're looking at um, years now of of doing this year after year, summer after summer. They take them down in the winter time, and then they've gotten grants to help support them. And the city has also given them money to make it look nicer, right? Because when you have one restaurant doing it and, you know, they do the bare minimum, they have these big stanchions and and it just doesn't look nice. And also it's not safe in some respects. Uh, so Durango is, you know, they're five, if not more years into making it look real good, make improving safety. They had one incidence where, you know, a drunk driver did crash right into somebody's dinner. Right. So it's not uh, it's not foolproof, um, but it is something to consider. And Durango does a very good job at their um, mobility situations, especially their downtown corridor. Yeah, it definitely feels very inviting. So. OK, last last call for other board correspondence. OK, hearing none, I think we will move to adjournment. So at 7 11, uh, we are adjourning the Mobility and Parking Board meeting. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Some real good discussion today. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.